Hey there, you lovely people of YouTube. My name is Elon Osborne, and I just wanted to give you an update on the progress of my testing theater. If you've been following me on Instagram, which I suggest you do immediately if you aren't already, you may have seen some progress photos or short videos of the huge ducts that were connected to the insane commercial grade AC unit outside of the shed. I don't need an AC unit with that much power, so bye bye ducts. Well, at least on one side of the shed, they were not easy to remove. But once I got them out, I then removed the interior wall since it was also unnecessary. Once that was out of the way, there were some electrical conduits running all along the ceiling that were also not going to be needed since they were previously running power to UV lights all around the room. Since this used to be a grow shed, if you didn't see my first vlog, I also took down the drywall around the areas I was going to run new electrical wire and speaker wire. Since this is a testing facility and not my dream theater per se, I'm I'm trying to recycle as much as I can to save costs. There were luckily quite a few two by fours either in the garage just lying there when my brother-in-law bought the place or from the wall that used to be here, which was very helpful for building the walls that I actually needed. Alas, I didn't quite have all the lumber I needed since these are nine foot ceilings and all these beautiful two by fours in the garage hallway are for an eight foot ceiling. Dang. So I got the remainder of the needed 2x4s and was ready to start framing. Well, almost. This silly 2x4 on the ceiling was a remnant of the previous wall and ran about 6 inches into the theater area, so it needed to be removed. Two of the screws in there are star bit, and then two more are regular Phillips bit. Par for the course for this particular grow shed. Everything is just a mishmash. <sighs> Nope. Nope. More nope. Ah! Yeah, my thoughts exactly. When in doubt, just get pissed off and break it off. Yeah. Hooray. After watching several tutorials on YouTube about framing, of course from the classic This Old House crew, I decided to take the plunge and go for it having never framed a wall before. Although due to my inexperience I seem to have miscalculated the measurements a bit because my first attempt proved to be a little bit too tall. Gang again. I spent the next hour pacing back and forth thinking of what I should do next. Plenty of ideas came to mind but some of them meant the budget for this testing theater would pun intended, go through the roof. So after one last big sigh, I swallowed my pride and separated the frame one nail at a time. I then loaded all the studs back in my car, drove them up to my brother-in-law's shop, measured them all one by one, and cut them to length. Upon my return to the shed, I built the frame up again, and wouldn't you know it, the wall was a nice snug fit. With some hammering to and fro, I got it into place. Yes, it took more time than I wanted, but this way, that's all it took, was time. I'm glad I didn't cave and do all the more drastic ideas I had in my head that would have cost lots of money. So once I knew that wall fit, I put up the remaining walls and voila, a fully enclosed testing theater space. So what are my plans for this testing facility? Well, in order to make it as easy as possible to switch components and speakers in and out, I'm going to account for any and all speaker configurations possible to a certain degree and to make subtle adjustments to speaker positions or to slightly change configurations to accommodate a more Dolby Atmos versus a more RO3D layout, I'm going to have speaker wall plates scattered all around. Two down low in front for my front left and right speakers, three up on the wall for my left, center, and right height channels, two down low towards the front for my wides, two down low flanking my listening position for my surrounds, two up high flanking my listening position for my middle heights, one straight above for the voice of God, a triple speaker wire plate for surround backs, and one extra just in case I need one down the road, and two up high in the corners of the back wall for my rear heights. Oh, and dual XLR plates plates in front and back of the theater for potentially long runs for rear subwoofers that can accommodate XLR inputs. Then I will just have to worry about short speaker wire runs going from the walls to the speakers themselves. Now can I even support a 9.4.6 configuration right now? Absolutely not. But stay tuned for the somewhat near future when I'll be reviewing a product that will allow me to have the biggest configuration I've personally had to this date going to be a while. So that about wraps up this vlog. Just wanted to give you a heads up on how it's going and what my plans are. Next up, I'll be running electrical and speaker wires and putting up the drywall. So 
stay tuned for that. Until then, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And of course, always be listening.